Thank you. You're gonna flip the screen kind of down towards my face. Yeah. Well, you can just do your, this top part, just kind of angle it down, can't you? Okay, yeah, yeah but I wanna see your face yeah. too. I'll get down like this to there say go. good morning. <laughs> <laughs> but um, good morning and uh, welcome. I wanted to let you know there were just a couple changes that I made to the recipe that got posted. Um, the recipe is a couple decades old. I made it for when I was running the Mazam store bakery and my daughter had asked me for this. So I went ahead and, and revised it. But one of the things that I'd like to do is suggest that you do six scones instead of eight because eight's kind of tiny and nobody wants a tiny scone. So that was the first change. And then the other one was that I'm using um, our local Bluebird Grain Farms um, Sonora flour, which is a, it's a lighter pastry flour. It's very fluffy and delicious. And I did increase that from one half a cup to three quarters of a cup. So I will give that information to Deirdre and we can, I'll post it again so that you guys have that. Okay, so let's see. Um, to start off, I don't know how many people do this when they're baking, but I always turn my oven on. So I would preheat your oven to start. And if you haven't already on hand have toasted nuts, which a lot of people don't, I usually toast my nuts first. And um, usually that's at 350, but if you do do it at the 375, which I've recommended for the scones, then it's just gonna be shorter time. So let's get started. All right, so what I've done here is, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but I've sort of out, put out my ingredients. I crystallized some ginger yesterday, and this is not necessary for the scones. You can really put anything in it you want, fruit, nuts, dried fruit, whatever. Um, you know, and I have my nuts are already toasted. This is some ginger sugar that is left over from making the crystallized ginger. And I got my sugar, and here are my dried fruit. I've got my wet ingredients all kind of measured out. So let's get started. Let's see. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, get my wet ingredients together. So I've got an egg here, my half a cup of, or my quarter cup of pumpkin puree. And I'm just using canned pumpkin. Um, I think a lot of people do grow squashes in the area and you may wanna use your own squash and I think that's fine. You just have to maybe play around with if it's a drier um, pumpkin or you know squash, then you may need to add a little more moisture. So I'm just gonna mix these two together. And I like to use lots of bowls when I'm, <laughs> when I'm baking. So I have lots of small bowls in my process. And then I have, I'm using buttermilk today. Um, it's not a worry if you don't have buttermilk. You can certainly use uh, a little bit of milk and sour cream. You could, you know, anything like that. Uh, you've got yogurt. You could use yogurt and almond milk. You know, it's really up to you. You know, just taking care that the viscosity of, you know, sour cream is going to be different than buttermilk. So you want to kind of try to mimic a little bit of a looser feel there. So I've got that done there. Got that already. And let's see, then we've got our dry ingredients. So I like to do that in a bigger bowl because we're going to end up cutting the butter into it. And if you've ever made pie dough or a tart dough, you're familiar with that. Um, I've got, I already pre cut my butter. So I don't know if you can see that. And so what I've done is cut three ounces, which is, um, three quarters of a stick of butter, but I've cut it into really small pieces and I've got it cold. So that's waiting for us. Did you put it in the freezer or just a cooler? You know, if you put it in the freezer, it gets too hard to mix in. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is once you've mixed all your dry, which we're just about ready to start, um, I actually put that in a Ziploc and throw it in my freezer. And then if I wanna make scones, I just mix up the moisture part of it and then just it's really simple to put it together so I don't know it's kind of nice to have that in your freezer waiting for you because mm -hmm. I love scones so anyway we'll get started on the I'm just using regular unbleached flour here and again you could play around with if you prefer just a straight whole wheat you could try using 
uh, 100 percent of the Sonora. I I'm actually going to try that next. I mean, I have time to do that before our, our show, but um, I'm interested in what that's going to do. But right now we're just going to do a combo. So I've got my my unbleached. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the scoop and do you ever weigh ingredients? I do, and, and that's thank you for asking that. Um, there is some a gram measurement on the original recipe, which is now incorrect because I did add more Sonora. So I'll update that. But certainly in a bakery, when you're working, it's really great to have uh, weights because it's consistent, and I do do that a lot. So um, so there's my unbleached, and then I've got my blueberry grain farms. So can I ask? You said that you use three quarters of a cup of the um, Sonora. Mm -hmm. Sonora um, and so is the total still 278 grams? No, it's going to be more than that. So that is. Okay. Long. Yeah. I could have actually just measured it right now, but I didn't. So let's see. I think I deal with it on here. Here, I'll do that for you guys right now. Let you know what the new total is. So if you're taking notes, okay. Three hundred and twenty-eight grams is what I'm getting. So three twenty-eight. If you want to update that, I'm gonna write it down. Four. Let's see what I got for ounces. Well, eleven and a half. So. And we can send you an update. I'll update you guys, but I like having that information. Okay, so I've got both my flours in there and then I'm just working down the recipe. I've got kosher salt. I always use kosher in baking. Uh, regular table salt is pretty fine. So it's gonna have a saltier effect. So if that's what you have, then you may wanna use a little less than half a teaspoon. Let's see what else we have. Baking soda, baking powder, oh, here we go. So these are your leaveners, which will be delicious. Make your scones rise. There we go, baking soda. And then as far as the spices go, I have cinnamon and nutmeg. But, you know, I'm a huge fan of cardamom and you can make it whatever you want. Like whatever sounds good to you, go for it. It's not, this is definitely not, you know, something you can't play with, so. I like cloves, it's a little bossy especially this time of year, it's a great spice. Some people don't like it, so don't put it in if you don't like it. I love nutmeg. I grind my own spices most of the time. Uh, whole nutmeg, I have a little spice grinder that I do. Uh, this just makes it really fresh. I uh, ran out of cinnamon stick, so today we are using Costco, which actually is a really nice cinnamon. So yeah, got those all in there. Okay, so got all that. My, my dry mix, I'm gonna say. And I just sort of toss it with my fingers, get it all mixed in. You like using your fingers. <laughs> I do, I do. Okay, and now is when I'm gonna cut in the butter. So I've got my butter pieces. Um, you can do this in a Cuisinart. It's really fast and uh, especially if you like to make scones. Um, you can just put the dry like I just did in a Cuisinart and pulse it super quick. And then again, you do need to cut up your butter though. You know, it does need to be in these tiny little pieces. So, um, but you can do this in a Cuisinart and just use the pulse function. And what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to separate all these little tiny pieces of butter. Cause that's what's gonna give your pie dough or your scone dough just a nice flakiness and richness, it's delicious. So you can just do this by hand and kind of smearing the butter with your fingers. That's also totally acceptable if you like getting your hands in there. Um, I have this tool uh, for cutting butter in. Do it that way. Working it in. And after, at this point, like I was mentioning earlier, you can take this, put it in a Ziploc and label it, you know, your dry mix. And then come Sunday morning or Monday morning, 
where you need it. Or even, you know, you can, I bake scones too and freeze them after I bake them because it's <laughs> very easy to pull out a frozen scone and pop it in the oven and have a delicious scone for yourself um, with your coffee at any point. So that's a couple different ways to, shortcuts, I guess, to having fresh scones. Okay, so I'm almost got that cut Does in there. Does it change the texture at all when you freeze a scone? I, you know, I, I mean, of course it's delicious when they come out of the oven, they're warm and fresh, mm -hmm. but honestly, I, I think they're great. So um, a lot of bakeries uh, get as far as doing this and making the scones and then cutting them and putting them on a sheet pan and leaving them in the refrigerator overnight. Mm -hmm. And then the bakers come in in the morning and just pop them in the oven. Mm -hmm. So you could get that far and even freeze them like that if you really wanted to, but I mean, a lot of people, you know, think about a frozen pie that you bake or you buy at the grocery store. It's been, you know, it's been in the freezer. So it's delicious. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. So I'm cutting it in. I've got some bigger pieces that are not getting in there. So I'm just gonna hand smash stuff a little bit. Just working it through my fingers. I guess the main thing here is you're trying to be quick. Um, the whole goal is to keep the butter cold so that it does its work. Not a problem if it's a hot day, uh, you wanna make scones in the summer, or if you wanted to make scones yesterday when it was 70 degrees, um, not a problem. You can just pop this bowl, whole bowl into your fridge. I've also uh, taken it and just, I put this in my freezer while I'm getting my other stuff together if I want. Today I'm, you know, I've got everything ready for you guys, so. I don't have as much lag time, but you could just, I mean, this could go in the freezer for 10 minutes, you know, while you're mixing your egg and doing whatever, chopping your, your nuts or whatever. So that will, it's okay to freeze it at this point because you've already broken it down. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay. So I would throw this maybe in the fridge, maybe in my freezer. So we'll just set that over there. That's ready to go. And now I've got my pumpkin puree, my egg and, oh, brown sugar, that's right. We don't wanna forget that. Okay, I've got half a cup of brown sugar here for you guys. Get it going. There we go. And then I'm just, again, yeah, just gonna really break it up quickly and lightly. Get that in there. There we go. There's that. Okay, so next we've got, um, so then these little yumminess. Um, I'm using this morning, I'm using raisins and I have the crystallized ginger that I've already cut up. So usually if you buy it, it's gonna come kind of a bigger piece, but I've cut it up and got that in here. You can, you can use whatever you want. Um, I love, I dried tart cherries in the summer and my in my dehydrator and they add some really nice flavor. So just cut up whatever fruit you like. A half a cup is about what I shoot for. You can certainly go for more if you like more. And then I add- um, But not, not fresh fruit, just dried fruit? Uh, you, I haven't, this recipe's got um, already the wet pumpkin in it. So if you were gonna do a, fresh fruit or even frozen fruit, you know, yes, you could do that, but that's gonna be a different recipe. You have to accommodate for that. So I already toasted my nuts this morning and chopped them up. So we're all ready on that. And then I like to do, you've got your sticky fruit, then you've got your, you know, other stuff in here. So I just add a little bit of flour, just a tablespoon. Again, I toss it up and cause you know, you got all these raisins in here and they kind of stick together and this just, gets the fruit and the nuts kind of separated a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. So that's all done. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my dry, I've got my wet, and I've got my fruit. And we're all ready to go. So if you've ever made pie dough, it's kind of a similar application, although you add very little water to pie dough. This one, I'm just putting it all in at once. And so then I'm just gonna gently sort of fold it in. And I'm just trying to get all that flour, a little touch of moisture there, kind of folding it in. 
getting it to a place where I can handle it with my hands. There we go. It just starts coming together. Um, I would not do this part in a Cuisinart personally. I, I just like to do it by hand, but I don't know, you could try that. You just don't want it to go too far to overwork it. You're just trying to be, so you can kind of see it. It's all sort of crumbly. Doesn't really look like it's probably gonna come together. Um, but we'll get that off of there. Um, now I've got my dried fruit and my nuts. So I'm gonna throw those in there. Um, now I can start using my hands. So I'll just, I mean, if you've had any bread experience, do the similar thing. I'm just trying to get all that. Pretty dry. It, yeah, so I, I, yeah, it is a little bit on the dry side, but just, just keep going. <laughs> I'm just gently, because that pumpkin is pretty wet. You know, you don't want like a gummy scone. So the pumpkin is a little bit of a surprise in there. I think recipes that don't have as, like something like that, they're using, you know, like a wet fruit or you're just using more butter, or, you know, something else to bind it. But yes, it is a little bit on the dry side, which, yeah, I wonder if you used all just unbleached, it might not be quite, I, that's kind of what I look for in this recipe. So mm -hmm. as you can see, uh -oh. not so dry anymore, right? I've got, oh. wait a second, Oops. what happened here? Hold on. Mayday, mayday. Okay. Oh, oh there's there. people that want to come in. Hold on a second. I didn't see them. Okay. Come on in. All right. So if you just joined us, welcome. Um, okay. So here, here, here made the point that this one's a little bit on the dry side, but I think it'll work. You just want to keep going until you've got all your stuff in there. And then this, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for you to pause if you need to, like, I don't know, say you wanted to have this for tomorrow morning. You could get it this far and put it on your sheet pan and just bake it in the morning, honestly. It's a very forgiving pastry, I'm gonna say. Okay, so I've got it, pat it out into say, I'm gonna say this is about as, Six inch disc, maybe. All right. And let's see. Got my... You don't need parchment paper, but if you like to bake, I highly recommend it. Or anything, really. It's awesome. I love it. I have a ton of it and I use it all the time. So I have put my parchment down. It does keep your pans from getting wrecked, especially if you uh, roast things at a higher temperature. Okay, so I got, I'm gonna do this again. I changed it to six so that we can have some decent looking scones. I got that going. You cut all the way through with your knife. Okay, and then here we go, all right. You, you can bake it just like this if you want. I like to pull it apart a little bit. Again, maybe that's the stiffness of the dough helps me with that. They don't go like all over the place. And, okay, so I got my six scones and I did make an egg wash. So this is from this morning, but I just, it's just whisk up a little bit of an egg and you can put heavy cream in it. You can put buttermilk, you can put almond milk. I mean, certainly the you know higher fat content dairy will color up maybe a little differently, a little more. But so I've done that, a little pastry brush. I like the silicone ones. And you're just painting the top a little bit with this egg wash. And this stuff, you know, I usually just label this and put it in my fridge and you can make it your breakfast tomorrow morning out of it, an omelet or something. It's totally usable. But that's called an egg wash. I'm going to use my ginger sugar that I is left over from making my crystallized ginger yesterday. So I'm just sprinkling a little bit of, you can use coarse sugar. I mean, you can use whatever, brown sugar or regular sugar, but it just makes the scones kind of crust up on top. So there it is. Then I'm just going to pop it in the oven 
and bake them at 375 and voila look oh well, that was quick look at that Goodness. so here we go we have our you can see the coloring on them i don't know if you can see that but they are where's our camera <laughs> no, it's really they're hard. pretty crusty i like them pretty dark and you know that's what that wash is going to do for you um I did it at 375. The recipe says 20 to 25, but I definitely left them in for 25 at 375. So there you go. So let me wash my hands and I'll entertain any questions that you guys have. Great. I guess that was pretty quick. Yeah, that was really quick. Did anybody follow along? Yeah, unmute everybody. We have any bakers? <laughs> well, I started, but I don't have any crystallized ginger. So I'm going to use your idea of pausing and then I'm going to go to the store. And I'm going to have to get some. You, you don't need crystallized ginger at all. I mean, it's just kind of, it, I like having it on hand. It's been a while from since I made it. So yesterday I was motivated to do it for this class and for the holidays, but you don't need it, honestly. You could use any dried fruit you want and it'd be fine. So it's not a requirement for the recipe at all. There's a question here in the chat. How thick are the squares? How thick are the stones or the butter? The squares. I didn't. I so the butter check. is like, I mean, those were only about, um, it's a place to start. So you're cubing it up to what, like quarter by quarter inch? Yeah, quarter inch by quarter inch squares of butter. And then you're, you're making it into a piece, piece, even smaller than pea sized because what's going to happen when it goes and hits that heat in the oven and your baking powder and stuff, it creates more of a layered look and you're just trying to not have globs of butter in there. You don't, yeah, those are, that's already baked. <laughs> so, um, anybody else have any other questions? You can unmute yourself because I can't really read the chat very well. You guys. My um, my question is more of a comment. My dough came out really sticky, so now I can't even handle it without adding flour. Okay, so yes, so if you followed the original recipe before the, I added a quarter of a cup to the Bluebird Grain Farms, so it's now three quarter instead of a half. So I'm not sure if you were following the half, but yes, just dust it with some more flour and just keep going. Okay. Yeah. Did you put uh, some of the crystallized ginger in with the dried fruit or only use it on the top of the scones? I, I added it inside. So I took that half a cup suggestion for dried fruit and I put probably a quarter of a cup of crystallized ginger and a quarter of a cup of raisins. Okay. And then I used the nuts mm -hmm. as well. So you could... You can make it. I wouldn't probably put a half, half a cup of ginger in there, but I don't know if you're. If you love ginger. <laughs> I love ginger. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Stu, I usually use a, a milk wash versus you know an egg that I'm going to have to throw most of it away. What's the What's the difference in outcome? Would you say? I think it's maybe more of a coloring, but yeah, you could do a, just wash it with milk. It's fine. Just something I think really to get it to stick. The sugar and then that browning yeah. that you get so it makes a i think it makes a pastry look more appetizing when it's browned and like colored thank you mm -hmm. sure question have you have you tried with a um gluten-free flours Great question. i have done a lot of gluten-free um my daughter was gluten-free for a while but i haven't done it recently. So um, you'll have to play around with that in terms of how much flour, but I don't, I don't know why it wouldn't work. It might be texturally a little different. Um, I mean, the fact that you can put butter in it is amazing. <laughs> that should make anything taste good, but um, you'll have to play around with that a little bit. I, I don't have the measurement for that. Yeah. Because um, my daughter-in-law is gluten-free and dairy-free which ah. complicates uh, baking a lot. Yes. And um, I use the um, paper that, um, the parchment paper to handle the doughs um, with 
with the um, coconut oil that hardens as as it goes. <laughs> uh, ever seen it's hard to handle. <laughs> Okay, so my daughter was also gluten-free and dairy-free for a while, and what she and does a lot of baking, and what she used in baking was the Earth Balance sticks, which oh, is yeah. different than the tub, has a different melting factor, and um, I definitely made tart dough with that, and it turned out pretty great. So that I would recommend a dairy-free stick over a you know a tub of something. I think the uh -huh. melting would be different. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good too. Anybody else have any questions? Question to Do you do you cut it in two and then put butter on it? I see people who, who Oh, you mean after it comes out of the oven? Yeah. No. I just, well, I don't know. I just eat it. I just pull it like a muffin, but you can put more butter on it. <laughs> no problem. You mentioned making your crystallized ginger, and I always just buy it. How do you make crystallized ginger? Well, you just go up on the internet and look for a recipe, but basically what you're going to do, you know, if you don't want to see somebody washing their dishes or something. <laughs> Maybe you can um, mute yourself. So, yes. Yeah, so what I do is um, I followed a recipe online yesterday. I think it was, I don't know, it was super straightforward, but I bought a pound of ginger. Off, and then you, I have a mandolin. I don't know if you guys, anybody has one of those, but they're super handy for slicing things thin. But even a sharp knife can do it, but you slice it really thin and then put it in some water and cook it on the stove. And at that point, what, what you're trying to do is get the ginger soft. And my ginger yesterday took longer than the recipe said. It said 35 minutes or until soft. And I, I took it you know, closer to an hour because I did cut it a little thick. But um, after that, then you just um, drain it, keep a little bit of that ginger water and mix it in with some sugar on the stove type. And then the, the ginger uh, sugar just kind of cooks together and dries out. It takes a little bit of time, but it dries out. And then, yeah, it's pretty easy, actually. Great, uh, thank you. Very simple, honestly. You get a lot and it keeps for a while. So there's a question here, how to dilute sour cream? Oh, okay, so what I would do to dilute sour cream, it since it sounds like you can, you're not dairy intolerant, is you can use anything, milk, um, almond milk, anything like that to just loosen it. You're just, you know, you just want to loosen it a little bit. So just trying to, if you think about what buttermilk looks like, uh, you could take yogurt or sour cream and kind of get it to that consistency. I mean, you could try it with straight sour cream and see how that works. Um, yeah. There's another question. To the, uh, how do you make crystallized ginger? I always yeah, buy it. Oh, yeah, someone just asked. Oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's okay. I came up with another question um, about the dairy, <clears throat> excuse me, dairy free. Have you done this? You may have said this with uh, coconut milk. Does that work instead of buttermilk? Um, I think the meat, so the, the leaveners with this recipe are working with buttermilk. So like the baking soda, the baking powder. So if you, um, I mean, you just try it. I mean, you can just try it. And to make buttermilk, like buttermilk with almond or oat milk. I've done that for my daughter is I've added a little bit of lemon juice to it and it doesn't quite curdle up like buttermilk, but you know, you still get that acid in there, which is supposed to mimic what buttermilk is okay. in terms of working with your other ingredients. But, you know, I think it's pretty forgiving recipe. I don't think it's going to taste bad. It's just more, I think the texture of what you're working with and trying to get to that sweet spot of it not being super wet and sticky or being too dry. And as Deirdre mentioned, when I was mixing mine, she was like, oh, it's so dry, but you know, just have confidence and keep going and you know, just handling it gently, but you, the, it does get, it was, you know, wet just fine. Thank you so much. Sure, absolutely. Anybody else? Okay, here's the big test. I'm going to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> that just a subtle taste of the pumpkin with a flare of ginger. Mm. <laughs> Somebody's coming in now. They're a little late. <laughs> um, so is the is it the pumpkin that gives the flavor or the pumpkin spice? I think the spices do a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. I think they do. They're pretty bossy, you know. I used um, cloves, which is pretty strong. And I did, I mean, it's got two teaspoons of cinnamon. That's a lot, you know. So I think the flavor, the spices are pretty, you know, bold, I would say. So the pumpkin is more for what? A lovely color? Oh, it, it definitely adds flavor. For it sure. does. Yeah, okay. but it's only a quarter of a cup. But yeah, flavor, moisture, um, yeah, color, for sure. Thank you. It does to add a little color. Absolutely. Anybody else? No. All right. Well, thanks. thank you. Thank you so much, Stu. Sure. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. It's fun. Thank Taking you. Busy day. And thank you all for being here. Wonderful. Have fun making your scones. Happy holidays.